Zenler podcast. I have with me another amazing Zenler person, Hazel here. She has been a regular. You might have seen her in the group, some of the workshops, and our channel as well. Welcome to the show, Hazel. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me, my mates. Thank you so much. A little introduction about Hazel. She's a dog behavior consultant and she does online and offline training and helps pet parents to help with their dog behavior. Today, I'm going to understand that how she has been able to thrive in the online world and specifically using Facebook ads to grow the business because I know everyone who's listening to this, Facebook ad is a tricky topic. We are all scared of the ad budget, right? So let's understand how did she start the business? How did she use Facebook ads? And how can you do it for yourself? Let's get started, shall we? Yeah, let's. Yes. First of all, I would like to ask that when did you plan to go online with your business? What motivated you to go online? Uh, well, it really started when I'd just finished my training as a dog trainer and somebody recommended me to some people who needed help with their dogs and um, they lived in a completely different part of France to me so it wasn't possible for me to go and help them in person um, and so I offered them some online training and that that was really how it got started um, I'd already set up my Zenla account um, but I wasn't I wasn't in any way, shape or form ready to start my business, really. I, I just kind of got thrown in at the deep end. And then it was kind of quickly trying to work my way around um, how Zenla works and, and what I could do in order to be able to offer them something online. Um, and so that was how it all started. Absolutely. But tell me something I'm curious, and I'm sure a lot of listeners would be, that a business which is... I know educational, but at the same time, it involves, you know, a living being, a dog. At yeah. times, you would want to, you know, see that what the dog is doing, maybe yeah. touch it or maybe understand the behavior. How simple was it for you? Or maybe if it was difficult, whatever the scenario was, how was it for you to cope up on an online training and understand the pet of the pet owner that you're speaking to? Well, the way that I've been trained means that I don't actually need to see somebody's dog in order to understand what's going on. So I do a full behavior consultation with them, which can last anywhere up to two, two and a half hours, depending on how many dogs there are in the household and what the issues are. Um, but I can pretty quickly work work out what's going on just from that consultation. But where, where Zenla was really useful was that I could video myself and my dog Jack demonstrating what I wanted my clients to be able to do so that they then could access that video and play it back and and look at it you know even in slow motion or whatever they wanted to do so that they could keep watching it over and over so they could work out what the technique was or you know any kind of thing that could help them um so videos of myself and Jack videos of other students uh, which is always really useful as well. So when I go and see people in person, I always video those sessions, then upload the videos into Zenla, and then I've got them there to use for training other people in the future. So that is a really useful aspect. Absolutely. So that means that recording the moments could, you know, act as a replay, could act as a strategy or an instrument for them to use and then implement exactly. the same replicate, the same strategies that you've done for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. For their pet right? Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah, that absolutely. works really well. Mm. Yeah. And I would ask a question, which is, uh, you know, a burning question for everyone, that how did social media work out for you? Like, how did you find, okay, these are two separate questions. Okay. One is how did social media work out for you? And what is the story of your first client? How did you crack the first client? Okay, so um, social media, in terms of getting, growing my business, do you mean? Yeah, so that is qu it's quite slow. <laughs> in fact, it's ridiculously slow if you're trying to do it organically. Um, and it felt very much like I was, I was a bit of a slave to constantly trying to make posts that were engaging or trying to put some good content out there that would be useful for people, but then not really getting any feedback from that and definitely not getting any clients from that. Um, 
and so social media on its own I think it's I think it's amazing because a lot of it is free you know you can post on Facebook for free you can post on Instagram for free and and you can engage with your ideal client through through those methods you know and if you if you use LinkedIn as well whatever whatever your social media strategy is for me at that time when I first started it was literally just Facebook and I didn't really have a strategy in place then because you know I was just starting out and when you're starting out you don't really know what you need to know do you you just kind of <laughs> doing one day at a time and hoping that something will happen and you'll suddenly get clients um so my first clients as I said were the very first clients that I ha ever had were from recommendations from people that I trained with so they were already in my social circle my uh on on Facebook um and it was them that recommended me to other people but then in order to try and get other clients I, I found that I was getting clients within my locality so I get a lot of recommendations from vets um and I advertise for free locally but i I felt that I wasn't reaching as many people as I could reach. And, you know, there must be loads and loads of people out there who are struggling with their dogs and and I needed to let them know that I could help them. So it then it became an issue that, how, you know, how do I reach these people if I'm constantly putting posts out there, but nothing's coming back? And that was when I decided to do the the paid adverts, I guess. Absolutely. That was about to be my next question that, you know, <laughs> if I do agree that social media is slow, it requires time. So I'll just talk about this one thing that there are two currencies you have when you start your business or when you are in the growth phase. The two currencies are time and money. If yeah. someone has a lot of time and are, you know, uh, we have to give that patience to social media to slowly and gradually penetrate because there are so many people creating content. Mm. Facebook, Instagram, all the social media platforms today are filled with content because yeah. everyone is creating content, whether a business owner or not. Mm -hmm. So the time, two currencies are time and money. If somebody wants to go organic, wants to go slow, wants to focus on the compounding, then it would be time for them. Yeah. But if you want to go fast, get clients, grow your business, get to the growth phase, then it is advertisement because it's a machine that's working for you. You put in the money, the machine is going to do the work as you instruct mm. it. So that's what I talk about. And you mentioned that, you know, social media was slow for you. Yeah. It was very slow. People were not really reaching out to your posts. So what worked for you as you answered the ads? So what exactly in the advertisement worked for you? Uh, in, in, the, uh, in the Facebook ads that I put out, um, I, what I did was I created a lead magnet within Zenla. So it was just a free lead magnet. And... Um, I put very little budget into it, uh, and I mean minuscule because I didn't have a big budget. Um, and I sent it, just sent set the advert going for about a month. I think the first one I did was a month, and I had I think the budget the ad budget that I set for the first one was something like two euros a day. It was really tiny, tiny, um, and from that I got enough. I got I got about 200 to 300 people downloaded my lead magnet and it worked out it did work out in the end about a euro a lead which I'm quite happy with that because previously I'd been spending 79 euros a month on a magazine advert in my local area um but the problem with that is that you don't know how many people see it or where they are or whether they've engaged with it or not. Whereas with your Facebook ads, there's like, a you know, there's a trail and you can choose your audience. You can target your audience. You know how many people have downloaded your thing and how many people have seen your website and all the rest of it. So in terms of tracking who's who's seeing what you're offering, it's much better and it's much more cost effective. Absolutely. So. I thought, well, instead of putting that money every month into a, a random magazine that that has got limited reach, I might as well just spend a little bit more and do the Facebook ads. So I literally had that really small budget the first time and I got, I think about 230, 240 um, new, new leads from that, people who all downloaded my lead magnet. And then on the back of the lead magnet, there was like an offer. So once they'd downloaded the freebie, 
they were then invited to an offer, uh, which was to work with, with me. And it was just a very, very simple funnel at that time. There was nothing complicated about it. It was literally lead magnet. If you like what you see here, then, you know, contact me and we'll see if we can work together. And um, so from that first ad run, I got one paying client, which paid for all those adverts and for the next lot of adverts that I ran as well. So I was really That's pleased nice. with that. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I have uh, a couple of questions that I mm -hmm. need to ask while you're going on. Number one, I would want to ask, when did you do this advert? Like how much time it has been? We are in 2024 January right now. Yeah. So when did this campaign run? That started at the beginning of 2023. And I just oh, ran so it. Somewhere between the first quarter. Yeah, it was in the first quarter of 2023. And I ran that okay. for one month. That's all. Okay. And, and how then... much money uh, in total did you put in the advert? Uh, it was, I think it came to just under 300 euros. Okay. So it was somewhere between 250 and 300 euros. Okay. Um, but then the second time that I ran the same, I did exactly the same thing again. And I just literally, I tr I, all I tweaked was some of my nurture emails. Yeah. Um, and I sent the same advert out again. And... I had a fixed budget that time. So I did it for a month and I just fixed the budget at 250. And I got a similar number of leads again. And again, from that, I got some, I got enough paying clients to pay for the next set of ad adverts. So, Absolutely. I mean, even though I've got like the smallest of budgets, it, it is still bringing me money in. And what I would say for people that think, oh, well, one client isn't really very much, and all right, it's covering the cost of my adverts. But what, what I would say to people that are thinking about doing Facebook ads is that the people that come into your funnel, so the people that came into my funnel at, in the first quarter of 2023, all right, only one of them bought anything within that year. However, the others came into my world and they've been in my world for 12 months now. And since then, we've had more conversations and they've yeah. some of them have been to a free event that I did. Um, and now some of them have signed up to a different offer that I'm that I'm running in this January. So I think, and I think there is some research out there about this, but I haven't looked into it in any great detail. But I do think that it takes people a while. So just when they come into your funnel doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to buy from you straight away. They, they like to get to know you and like you and trust you and all that kind of thing. So it might be 12 months down the line before you reap any rewards from that ad run that you did, you absolutely. know, in, in the in the beginning. Absolutely, absolutely. Because uh, uh, it, the theory is, the study is that it takes seven to eight touch points for a customer to convert into a sale. So actually okay. we are paying Facebook for letting people into our system and trusting us and knowing who we are and then yeah. slowly and gradually they convert. I also yeah. feel that, you know, out of these 200 people or 250 people that came mm. into your list, even one or two converted, they were complete strangers who have converted now. Exactly. These complete strangers will go to their network and tell that, hey, I met Hazel through Facebook. She's done mm. a wonderful job and I should recommend. So the cycle of referrals also start when complete strangers come into your system. Yeah. So I think that is also one thing that largely benefits us. Yeah. And what I was surprised about really was because because I didn't have like an offer ladder at that point. I just yeah. have literally one offer, which was quite a high for me. It was a high ticket offer. I mean, yeah. to lots of people, it wouldn't be. But it was like four, nine, eight. They were paying for some dog training with me, which I think for dog training at that time yeah. seemed sounded to me like a lot of money. But they came in cold from that advert and paid that amount of money to train with me, even though. They didn't necessarily know me. They hadn't built up that know, like, and trust. But I think more people now are coming in and taking time to, you know, find out about me, find out what I do, have conversations with me. And actually, that's really nice because then that's when you start to get that interaction in your social media. Um, because then once people are in your world and you start posting on social media, they then do interact because they know you a bit more. Um, and the other thing I did at that time was to set up a Facebook group. So people, so now not only do I just have my, I have my, my business Facebook group, but I also use my personal Facebook group for business as well. 
and now I've got a closed Facebook group. Yeah. Sorry, I'm yeah. mixing up the word profiles with groups. So I've got my business profile, my personal profile, and then um, a closed Facebook group. And yeah. that's a really good way to get people in. So now on the on the lead magnet that I originally used, they're invited to join the Facebook group and then that brings them into the group and then that's where we have more conversations. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, so I just, I don't run the advert all the time. I know some people like to have a lead magnet running all the time. The lead magnet is available on my Zenla site, but I don't run the ads all the time. I'll literally run the ads once a quarter. Yeah, and, it's like um, you're reading my mind. The questions that I have, <laughs> I don't even need to ask them. They're answered already. <laughs> so just when you said about the content, right, that was the exact question that was in my head that you answered already. But I'll still go ahead and ask that. My question was that, do you still post the content on your profile after using ads? And if you do, then what is the frequency? Um, yeah, I still I still post regularly on social media. Um, I try and do something every day, but it, I don't always do something every day. Um, I have to be honest and say that my social media strategy is not as strong as it might be. Um, and I think it's something that I would like to work towards is having a proper strategy so that I can... Um, plan posts in advance and have them set up ready to go and then they'll just go out automatically uh, I did do that over Christmas and New Year actually so that I wouldn't have to do any social media while I was away I did drip in some extra things during Christmas and New Year because I was dog sitting at a chateau in yeah. France and so I, I did add some extra information and things there um, but other than that I do I, I, I'm still I'm still doing the social media thing, regardless of whether I do ads or not. Um, I think you have to, really. I think, you know, people switch off. If if they see that you're not there and, and you're not always popping up in their feeds, then Absolutely. they just forget that you exist. So Yeah, I agree. Um, even when you're running ads all the time, you mm -hmm. mentioned that you're not running ads all the time right now. No. But even if you're running ads all the time, People know that ad is a service that is being paid for. So yeah. you, you have the control of saying whatever you would want to on the ad. But mm. the real difference is when they pop on on your social media from the ad and now see what is your value, what is your credibility, how are people engaging with you, what are the comments they are making, are there yeah. any case studies posted there. So your trust and credibility is actually built when they jump on your social media from that ad because nobody would you know, convert in one ad. Once no. they come into the pipeline, like you said, the uh, the long wait period is longer. It could be 12 months as well. Yeah. So that is the time that they are taking to trust you. And that is the time your social media content can actually work wonders because now they are in your system. Exactly. And especially with the Facebook group, because they join the group and then I do bits of free training in there, you know, bits of free content and stuff. So it's an it's a nice place for them to to be to come they can ask me questions and I'll hop on and do a live uh, so for example if I don't know if somebody was having a particular problem with their dog constantly barking and I know that that's a common problem then I'll just hop onto Facebook onto my Facebook group and do a quick live about dogs that bark um, and then that's the way for them to see what it is that I do but I think for me the biggest thing that comes out of the ads is building the email list because Absolutely. No matter what happens to your social media, whether, you know, Facebook or Instagram or whatever, change their rules and regulations, whether they start charging, whatever it is that they decide to do, your email list is always your own email list and you can do with it whatever you need to do. Um, and so I do like to, I don't overly email people because personally, I find that annoying. If I sign up to yeah. somebody's email and then they're sending me emails every day of the week, that's annoying. Um, so I, what I tend to do is I will do one, maybe once a week, once a week, once every 10 days, unless there's something really interesting coming up. If I've got a launch going on, for, for example, then I might send something out a bit more frequently. But I don't like to bombard people. But email is great. And I've I've started asking questions on emails and just ask people to respond to the email. And I just do that through the Zenla email facility I don't yeah. have any external email features um and you know some people respond which again is another way to start conversations with people so that's really good I think absolutely that, 
building your email list is definitely the way to go and and the way to do that quickly is to have paid adverts absolutely i think uh, email list is your own database nobody can ever you know uh, take them away from you that's your own database and like you said when you send out an email and now that conversations actually help you to understand what should i build more what do exactly. I need to improve in my product? What am I not yeah. doing correctly? And like you said, that if I see a you know question that has a pattern and a lot of people are asking, that becomes a social media post. That yeah. also comes from the conversations that you're opening up. If there's not a proper audience that you can talk to, communicate with, then you don't have the content. Then you have to sit down, brainstorm, and look at what other people are creating, which might not be relevant for you. So I think that's exactly. a great strategy, listening yeah. to your audience. Exactly. And just to, I think the more conversations you have, the more conversions it leads to. Absolutely. Um, I when, love when that I... phrase. <laughs> I always talk about conversations <laughs> to conversions. That's like a pet dialogue I always use. So I yeah. love that one. Because it's so true. You know, that if I can get somebody on the phone to have a conversation with me, it's very rare that they don't sign up to something with me. So getting those conversations started and it might just start with an email it might just start with a comment on a social media post but I like to do voice notes as well to make it a bit more personal and if I'm emailing people you know I always try and use the name of their dog or you know just really simple things to so that they don't necessarily think that it's a blanket email to everybody yeah. you know so it's just little things that you can try and do to to make people feel that you're not just constantly hounding them for money because that just turns people off. Um, and I, I have very few people unsubscribe. I've had one or two, but the, you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't worry me because they're not my people. That you know, right. that's fine. They've come into my world. They've had a look around. It's not what they were looking for, and so they leave, and that's fine. But the vast majority of those. I mean, whatever I've got now, 500, 600 people on my email list, they they hang around and they have conversations with me. And a lot of them have joined my closed Facebook group. So, you know, I get to have even closer conversations with them, which is really good. Absolutely. And I think that's amazing. A 500, 600 list is amazing. That's mm. like way to go. But I would definitely want to ask that, you know, what is the reason that you're not continuously running ads? Since you mentioned that you run it on uh you know, frequency basis when you decide mm. to? At the moment, it's just financial constraints, my meat, to be quite honest, that, um, you know, I, it is just a matter of turnover. And as the business grows, uh, because it has been quite slow, to be honest, it's, I've had, I've had a lot of clients, but I haven't had the growth that I would hope for. So last right. year, I hired a business coach which made a lot of difference, actually, because uh, the thing is, and I, I guess this is true for a lot of people when they start a business. For me, I know a lot about what I do. So I know a lot about dogs and dog behavior and how to help people with their dogs. But what I didn't know was how to run a, a business at all. You know, and there was all this new stuff to learn. And, it, you know, like marketing strategies, like social media strategies, like funnels and all the rest of it, it there's a lot to learn. And I just felt that, I'd rather last year put my money into hiring a business coach, somebody that can point me in the right direction rather than spending that money on ads. But at least now I've got a better idea of what I'm supposed to be doing and how to do it. And I'm much more focused so that I can see already. I mean, traditionally, November, December, January, I don't normally make any money from dog training because who wants to do dog training in the winter months, you know? Um, but the Christmas that's just gone in the new year, I've made more money in those three months than I did the rest of the year. So yeah. I'm obviously doing something right. Um, and it's just now keeping that momentum going, but it has taken a while to grow that momentum. Uh, but I think that's more about me not really knowing what I was doing and just putting stuff out there on social media and not really understanding how the whole how the whole business thing works, you know? Absolutely, absolutely. I agree, I agree. It's better to get started than figure out a way of how to do it. And, you know, this is my favorite line. I'm sure somebody will come and say that I repeat this in every podcast, that is mentors are cheat codes. Like, why not, you know, use them, not use them, why not uh, learn from them 
to take their path and get to the shortcut because they've been through all those years. They've been exactly. through the mistakes that we might make. So yeah. let's just, you know, hold their hands and move faster. That's it. I mean, I think you, you have to kind of in, invest in yourself if if you want, yes. you know, a serious business that isn't just kind of an expensive hobby then you you really need to know what you're doing and and how to do it in a in a quick a quicker way you know so and I mean I have you know we all have challenges in our businesses don't we but I have challenges because I'm in France and so I had all the issues in the beginning with do I do my website in one language or two languages and you know all those kinds of things and it's taken me a little while to work out who my clients really are I mean as it turns out uh, the vast majority of my clients are English. At one point, it was about 50-50. Um, but more recently, the vast number of clients seem to be English. Um, and so that makes it easier for me to target what I need to do because, you know, I was doing social media in two languages and it was just exhausting. And I spent yeah. more time kind of creating things in two languages than I did actually trying to market any offer because I didn't really know who to market it to and and how to do it. So I think you've got to be really focused on who your ideal client is. And they might not always turn out to be who you think they were in the first place, but you've just got to kind of adapt and go with that. And It's an ever-evolving um, process. And the client, well it is. who do you want to sell to, makes or breaks the deal, because that's yeah. the most important. Uh, yeah. Like I always use an example saying that if I serve if you know an Italian restaurant is serving Italian cuisine people yeah. will come who want to have Italian food not probably Indian food that's a wrong, yeah. wrong kind of audience so serve what your audience is looking for and will make those sales but that's selling right. to the wrong people will not end up with any money or any offers any no. sales at all no exactly so is it yeah. it's just a big learning curve isn't it but I think I I did enjoy doing the Facebook ads because I was a bit addicted to logging on there every day and seeing how many more, how many more leads yeah, have I got? Like how, many, <laughs> yeah. how many poor people have downloaded my lead magnet, you know? Yeah. And it was just, I found it really exciting. But I think that, you know, you've just got to, it's just got to be part of, of a overall strategy. I, d I don't think it's a good idea to just do Facebook ads or just do social media or just, you know, um, and I know there's Google ads out there as well, which I haven't even looked at yet. That's something for the future. But it's just like you say, when you first start out, you've got to start with one thing and try right. that, see what happens and just keep just keep tweaking it. And don't jump, don't jump from one thing to the other. If you just keep jumping from one thing to the other, then nothing's going to work. So just stick with absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's true. That's so true. Yeah. Mm. And as you mentioned, it is definitely, uh, it has to be a package. It has to be a package deal. One thing will not work completely on its own. There's some, there has to be something that's backing it up. So the ads are backed by the content that you create and the contents, you know, help promote the ads. So it's vice versa. It has to be a combination of all the things put together in the marketing, which works for you. That's right. And at first that's hard because you feel like you have to do everything at once. Yes. And you, you're you not quite sure where to start. And and I, I mean, I found that really difficult to begin with. And then in the end, I just went with, you know, okay, well, I'm just going to start with this thing. So I'm just going to start with my social media. And that's where I started. I think just because it's, it's free and it's easy-ish to do. And at the beginning, you have, when you don't have many clients, you have a lot of time, as you said earlier on. So you've got the time to sit and think about what you so you know what you're going to put out on social media. But then as you get a bit busier, you don't necessarily have time for that. And you know, and I think building assets is always a really good thing to do because then you've always got a lead magnet ready to go. You've always got content ready to go. Um, so that's something that I really like to do is to build assets for my business. And uh, whether they're videos, they could be demonstration videos. They could be um, instructions on how to how to you know do something with your dog or it could be a behavior tracker but anything really that you can offer to people to kind of bring them into your world is really good as well absolutely absolutely i think this video has uh, been like a, a full package video and anybody who is watching this video will definitely have a lot of marketing insights 
I would also want to ask you specifically with your online business mm -hmm. and if you are comfortable sharing, what is the kind of revenue you're able to make using Zandler and using your online training? Um, oh, gee, you put me on the spot there, uh, man mate. I, I'm not particularly comfortable talking about that. Um, I think... I think what I would say about revenue is that pricing is probably the most challenging thing for some people to do and asking yeah. people for money can be really hard. Um, and finding a, an offer ladder where you've got a variety of offers at different price points so that you've got a range of offers available to people who've got different budgets, I think is a really good idea. Now, in the past, I've just had the, that one offer at 498 um, and I've had, what, 20 or 30 clients have taken that up in the, yeah. what is it, two years that I've been with Zenla. So that gives you an idea of the figures. Yeah. However, I do know that I'm not charging enough for what I do. I, I know that my business coach tells me that all the time, you're not charging enough. So I think the revenue, I think, I, I think Zenla's a brilliant platform you can it's there for you to make out of it what you want you know and I think if you're the kind of person that say 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 you have a coaching business or some, some other kind of business where you're charging people thousands for your top level offer then you can easily do that with Zemla you know and all right my top level offer might only be 500 euros um whatever but for somebody else it might be 5,000 might it so I, I just think there are no limits to what you can achieve Absolutely. with Zenler, yeah. the, the, you know, it's it's really good, whether you just make a little bit like me or you make a lot, you know, the facilities are the same. If you've got the pro package, you get the same, you get the same deal, however much money you're making. So Absolutely. I think it's a really great platform. And it's, I think it's a great way for people to start out as well, because they can start with the free version and then they can go to the pro package, um, which is just incredible. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. And that's a great insight. Like you mentioned that, you know, it depends upon the offer, the delivery, how you've packaged it, and what is the kind of price you're asking. And that makes it each to his own, depending exactly. on what level they are at, how many offers they've created, and how yeah. are they, you know, putting it forward. So I think yeah. that sums up the entire video and makes it a full uh, bomb value video. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much, Hazel, for your time. I would You're definitely welcome. want to ask anybody who's listening to this video who would have loved you on this video, wants to talk to you, get in touch with you, or, you know, take your services, take the training, or just want to come to you and say, I love the podcast. What is the best way to get in touch with you? The best way to get in touch with me is probably um, through Facebook or Instagram. Oh, let's say Instagram. It's easier, isn't it? Because I'm just... Um, the at sim symbol ampersand is it in English <laughs> um, and Kaniami which is C-A-N-I-A-M-I-S we'll also put the link in the description for sure brilliant for to thank you, you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but yeah pop over onto Instagram and say hello because I've not been on Instagram for very long actually because like I said when I first started I was just on Facebook so um, Instagram is a whole new thing for me it's a whole new learning curve so yeah it'd be really nice if people popped over there and and followed me or said hello or whatever yes absolutely thank you so much for your time and thank you for such lovely insights i'm sure everyone who listens to the podcast will have a lot of golden nuggets to take back thank you i so hope much. it's helpful for somebody i hope so <laughs> thanks mummy thank thanks you. for inviting me bye, <laughs> bye.